when I was very little, around three and five. So I think I'm quite normal, with the sense that normal in an abnormal way. Because I do have a issue when I was very little, and my parents is having difficulties to look after me because I'm way too playful. So you can see that my okay, so you can actually see that my legs are actually tied up. Because if my parents they don't tie me up, I would just run all the way and they can't even find me at all. So that's how playful I am. But still I'm quite cool, right? So I am from a Chinese setting school in um in one of the one of the K, um, one of the school in KL. So this is very normal, right, for Chinese setting. If you are not so familiar with the setting itself, it's basically it's more on there's one phrase, Da shi ma shi ai. It's more on saying that beat is because we care about you. And we shout at you because we love you. That's exactly how the Chinese school setting is. So it's very normal. I'm just way too playful that one day the teacher actually just pointed at me and she said, Yvonne, huh? Why are you so playful? You're just useless, just a piece of shit. That is exactly what she mentioned to me. And I was like, oh, yeah, I think I am a piece of shit, I think. So then, I always finish up my homework. If you're not familiar with another setting or another rules in Chinese school, we always ask the student to sit on the floor or next to the dustbin just because they don't finish their homework. I finish my homework. I always make sure that whatever that I do in the class is always fully participated for whatever activities it is. But I still sit next to the dustbin for two years just because I'm too active, just because I'm too noisy, just because I'm too playful, too much questions. So then I still take it that I'm a piece of shit. And I just keep thinking for the next 10 years that I am a piece of shit, I am a piece of shit, I am a piece of shit. Then one day I went to university just like you guys. Just think that, oh yeah, you know, what's the purpose of going to university? Just to get a piece of paper that proves that I've already been in this university for four years, for three years, for two years. That's all. The same thing that I have experienced as maybe some of you guys experience right now. And I do not even know what's the main purpose for me in this world. Like, I'm just a piece of shit, right? So then, I told myself, what is the true meaning of life? Why am I being in this world, you know? Because of money? I think most of you think that, you know, the main meaning, the true meaning to be in this world is to find a lot of money and be a millionaire, be the next Richard Branson, or be the next Tony Fernandez, or be the Jack Ma, the next Jack Ma, who knows, right? Or to have a very happy ever family like this. Or to be famous like Lady Gaga, or you know, like Donald Trump. Right? Who knows? Right? But the true meaning of life is to actually create a purpose in life. But you, everyone's telling me that you have to make a purpose, but how do you make a purpose? That's exactly what I was facing at that time. Nobody was telling me, what should I do? How a piece of shit can do things for the world? First thing you need to learn, the shift of perspective. So how do you change this? How do you change the way that you think? You need to find the values within. So, for a piece of shit, how can you find a piece of shit of the values within? This is just useless. You just flush. You just talk. That's the life of shit. But the true fact is, it's not at all. Look at this picture. That is actually built by a lot of shit and take time. <laughs> I know it's funny. It is because you have no idea that a shit that can be so useful to lift up the world or to create energy or even to warm someone's someone's 
in Africa or in some other poorest country. And I told myself that, hey, girl, come on, lah, man. You want to be a shit, right? It's okay. Be like useful shit. Done. So that's what I said to myself. Oh my god. I was just funny looking at myself. Are you serious? How can I be useful? But then I told myself, oh, that's something in me that I always wanted to help people. And I told myself, let's just, you know, work on it and plan on it. So I know that you want to be a piece of shit, right? Shine bright like a shit. Yes, of course. You can be a shine bright shit. So what I did was, I signed up for a camp, which is actually in Sarawak. It's called Indian Sarawak. So that was my first time and I know that the key for me to plan everything is humanitarian. I don't know what is it, but I know that it's actually aligned with my own values. To be kind, to help people, that's it. So that I just told myself, let's just do something meaningful for the people. And I signed up for this in Sarawak and I've been there for six days. And one of the things that I realized throughout this six days camp it's not about how to help people but I found something that's very important is something money can't buy the happiness and the smiles of these children and I know that one important value which is success is not as much as you can make but it's how much impact you make in people's life and that is the true meaning that I'm really seeking for I know that I'm seeking for so long so when I know that, I wanted to help these people and I told myself, come on, stretch and pursue it. So believe in my own dreams. So then I realized in order for me to align with whatever things that I wanted to do, which is helping people in humanitarian works, and I know that's one thing called sustainable development goals. So there's 17 goals in here for whatever things that you are doing right now in this world, whether you just switch off the light, whether you are just closing up the tap, whether you are just using the public transportation, each and every single small tiny step that you make in this world is actually aligned with all of this, if you, have, if you really wanted to know. So I know that you must really work on something else. So that I stretch myself and I pursue with it and I know that you must learn about sustainable development goals. There may be some of you who just know about SDG, maybe just right now, or maybe you have just sort of an idea what is sustainable development goals. But that's what I am as well. I was in that place and I know that I do not know everything. I don't know. I don't know what is SDG. What is this? And how can we do? And what can we do to help these people? So then I started to join a lot of conferences. I joined around 55 conferences in two years time. So basically I was still a student and because I was way too active and sometimes I have to just skip my classes just for the conferences. But the true thing is when you're attended too many things, when you get to know too many information from a lot of people and something that you really experience is, I am so lost. Because there's too many information coming from here and there and you have no idea what is the exact things that you really wanted to do. And sometimes you even lost yourself really. That was what I am. I was too proud because being a student representative and being a youth representative of Malaysia has been traveled for so many countries and been talking for so many um, talks and so forth. I am so lost of why am I doing this? Are they really helping me in my life? And then I carried out this project by just right after my graduation last year. So I made it to UK right three days three days after my graduation i bought the tickets like two weeks ago it was just an instinct telling me girl just go and also there's two more important things first is because i can't hold the pressures from the peers from my peers and everyone when you are a youth representative when you are the representative for a lot of things people always look up on you that was what exactly I experienced with the pressure and I just ran away from it. I'm not facing it, of course, because everyone has their own fears. Of course I do. So I just ran away and I just went, 
thinking, without thinking at all. So I went there, there was one time my friends who is actually from the Philippines, they just text me on Facebook telling me that there's actually Marawi is detected by ISIS, so that a lot of people dying and so forth and I was very sad to know about this news and I told myself, girl, you need to do some things. You really need to work on something to help these people because I have, no, I have nothing to do in the UK. Basically, I just went there, said, I don't know what am I doing. So I told myself, just do this then. Let's just carry on this. So I cycled from London to Edinburgh, 808 kilometers for a girl who has no idea how to cycle and I made it. And also did it all by myself and giving speeches when throughout the journey when I was cycling about sustainable development goals, of course. So what I did was I just cycled and I just set my route that whenever there's any school that near my route, I would just head on. So there was one day I just went all the way for 20 schools, none of them said yes to me. None. Imagine you knock the door, uh, hi uh, sir, can I just give a speech for sustainable development goals? It won't take long, it would just take five minutes long. Is that possible? No, I'm sorry, um, but we do have a lot of um, going on activities today. That's what exactly I experienced for 20 schools in a day. It's been a very sad day for me, but it's way more sad when I just walked through Ripon, which is actually one part of England. I went through and it was raining, it was chilling, it was around 10 Celsius, and I ran out of hot water. So I went to that village and I knocked door to door with that condition. I said, Hi, do you have some hot water? Can I have some hot water? And there's only one guy who actually answered the door and he said to me, I'm sorry, we don't have hot water. That moment, my tears flew down from my face. It's like, why the entire world just being so unkind to me? What is going on in my life? And I just cannot stop crying. I just cycle all the way to the other village as well. So I went to um, one of the campsites. It's actually uh, West Tenfield. It's actually called West Tenfield. And I just went to this campsite and this lady saw me. She was, she was shocked because an Asian girl with a lot of gears at the back and tent and so forth. So she was looking at me she, and of course she's also afraid that what is this girl doing? So she looked at me and she's like, are you alright? Because I was shivering, I was like, tears on my eyes. And then when she said that to me, are you alright? And I just cannot stop crying, I just burst out, and just like that. And she, she just feel, I think she's also very sad to see me that because she has a daughter who is actually living in Australia by her own self. So she can actually relate that what if my parents saw me in that place, right? So when I met this lady who actually comforted me down and telling me that it's okay and she actually got me a super nice flat for that night and she cleaned all my clothes all the shoes and feed me like hot food and so forth and she's actually also working very close with some of the schools in her area and very lucky that I actually got invitation to speak for the next day. So actually it's not everything in that very very bad way. It always has good opportunities around but you have to be really optimistic. So I'm very grateful that I met them and <laughs> things just went quite well. Love conquers all. I think it's true. Because whatever race that you're from, whatever ethnics you are, or whatever skin colour, whatever, whatever you are, whoever you are, love is the most important thing of all. Because for an Asian girl who cycled all the way to Edinburgh, I have no idea what's going to happen. But these people never judge me. What I they have the most important intent is they just want to help me to actually finish up this campaign. And that matters the most. Without their help, I won't be able to finish it. So I'm still very grateful for whatever help they gave to me. And until now, that I will never forget each and every one of them. This is actually the kids from my host family. 
They are just so lovely that until now, that I actually still kept the toys that they gave to me in my office. It was actually played by them every single day. They're actually a mixed baby for, uh, from a white and a black, and they are just adorable. And they just make me realize that, you know, you love someone, not just because of the blood or whatsoever, but just that connection. I just met them for not too long, but they loved me unconditionally. So, well, there's also two people that I would like to, I would like to thank for. One is actually Ziggy from the left, and then uh, jo uh, Jeff Jones from the right. So, Ziggy is actually a Polish. He and his girlfriend is very nice because they actually I met them through couch surfing, and they are very passionate in cycling. So they have been doing a lot of um, long distance cycle um, competitions and so forth, or even like just a, a tour. So they actually gave me a lot of pre practice and also a lot of pre prep for my journey. I'm very thankful. And Jeff is actually uh, the mentor from um, LSE, and he's actually very grateful. I met him in the British Library for uh, one of the event. So. He is truly helpful that because he actually guided me a lot in life and of course gave me a lot of um, mentors about how to make decisions and so forth. So these two people that I'm very thankful for, especially for this bike ride as well. So actually this host is super adorable. They actually fix my um, tires because that's my first time I encountered a puncture tire. I have no idea how to change the tire. This guy actually was his first time um, fixing a tire as well. So they even cleaned my bike and they are very happy because um, they would really want to host me during that night. But I rejected that offer, even though I'm very grateful for their help and so forth. And I told them, I said, I already accepted one of the offer from my host in uh, Anik. So I really have to say no, but I'm very appreciative that your offer. And I still make a paint. I painted her uh, a card and I posted it to her when I back to London. And I posted it to their place in Cramlington. Kind and be kind. It's not easy sometimes when unkind people treat you unkindly and you still have to be kind to people. But you know, love conquers all. Whatever people treat you, people who are saying something bad to you, it is okay. That's how they think about you. You can just accept it and try to see that what you can be improved but still be nice to them. Why are they treating you in that way? It's because they want you to Proof. You can always think in that way, shift of perspective. And of course, you always have to be kind to people because the world is already so unkind. So do you think that we need another person to be unkind to the other person as well? Or we want someone to be kind or to be a better place or to be a more, how do I say this? Or a place where it's just full of love. That's actually one of the reasons why I might have to give speeches when I was cycling. Because the true fact is that I can actually just cycle from London to Edinburgh. I don't need to stop and go to school by school, am I right? But I know myself that if I don't do this, the next generation they wouldn't know what is sustainable development goals. And I know that it's my job to really educate the next generation that we must work for the better future. So I decided this because I also being educated by other people telling me what is sustainable development I think it's the time for me to give back to the society. To be fair, right now I'm working in Shopee as a project management, which is something I never think of. Especially when I started this journey, I put it on my LinkedIn, on my Facebook, people asked me, Oh, Yvonne, what about the humanitarian work? Hey, I never stop helping. Despite the fact that it's just a different way of doing your own things. I am being a project management, but still I'm trying to see what I can help these people to improve their work, their performance in the work. And of course during the night I'm being a special needs um, tutor as well, and I'm still teaching and I'm still helping these children, and I'm still guiding them and want them to succeed in life with all these values. Always have hope, whatever that you're doing, have faith and keep continuing doing it, and love whatever things that you are doing and whatever things that happen in your life, even though that's sad. And always be applying this principle shift of perspective. Thank you very much for listening. <laughs>